Hey guys, it's Michaela, and welcome to today's video. So I have decided I just got a new camera, okay? And it is a Polaroid One Step from the 70s. And today I figured since I have this new camera, I would show you how I clean and aesthetically restore my cameras. I am not claiming to be a restorationalist. I do not how to I do not know how to refurbish cameras. But what I do know how to do is clean them to make them look aesthetically nice. Now this camera does not have any leather on it, um, but it does have, it's made of plastic. So I'm gonna show you how I refurbish those and I'll make some comments on others as we go. So let's get into it. This one is my brand new, <laughs> brand new vintage camera. It is the Polaroid One Step. Now this camera is from the 70s. This is an original. They are remaking this version of the camera right now. Um, however, I do not own the, that version because I don't want it. <laughs> Basically, right now, there is not a large area that needs dust taken out. There are some areas of issue such as this. There's some small spots here. Let me bring it up close. So as you can see, we have this smudge here. We've got some smudges here. And these aren't dust, this is just, you know, wear and tear. Um, we've got it over here too. Um, if you can see around this button, we have some buildup. This black is not buildup, that's just um, the button. But there is buildup on around the edge. There's a scuff here. The side is just very uh, fingerprinty and a little scuffed up, but not too bad. This rubber is in great condition, um, but we're still gonna clean it out just because people's eyeballs have been there and I don't want an eye infection. Um, this is all scuffed too. This, this is a problem area. It's very dusty and I believe the screen might be punched in, so we're gonna have to check that out. Um, but this area is very dusty. And same thing on this side, it's just scuffed. Now on the inside, we're doing pretty well. Um, we do have a decent amount of grime here along this edge and along this metal edge. And this roller on this one spot right there is a little gross. So we'll be cleaning that up as well. Here's the deal. Excuse my shoddy camera work. I've never done a video like this, so it's not gonna be that good. But up close, like we're zoomed in here, we've got some issues that we're gonna clean up. So the first step is to use isopropyl alcohol. The one I have here, sorry for the crazy zoom, is just 70% isopropyl alcohol. Ideally, the higher you can get it, the better, but this is the one I have for now. Um, but the f higher percent you have, the faster it's going to burn off, which is what we want. So basically, I'm just going to take a little bit of this on this Q-tip that I've got off camera. And I'm going to saturate the end of the Q-tip. And then we're just going to start going towards these scuffs. Now, I like to use a little bit of alcohol all over and you have to use a little bit of force which is fine you're not gonna hurt the camera but as you can see already i don't know actually if you can but this area that i just cleaned is a fully different color the line is about here and there's already dirt coming up and it doesn't really look like there's anything but there definitely is we're just gonna continue like that you don't want to just pour straight rubbing alcohol onto the camera like that's not smart you need to do it with a contained vessel like a q-tip so now the corners and edges tend to get lots of scuffs and also polaroids tend to have a lot of little crevices and like curves and they tend to hold lots of dirt so already we've got a decent amount here of dirt it's not a whole lot, but it is a decent amount. Now this is a sticker. So I'm gonna be really careful about that because if it gets too wet, it's gonna start to disintegrate. So 
so I'm gonna go in on that when it has a low amount. This is also a sticker, so I need to watch that. Sometimes in the older cameras, these are metal plaques, these little emblems, or they'll be part of the plastic. However, these are both stickers, so I need to be wary of that. Now, the other suggestion I have to you is don't do this on a wooden surface because the alcohol will take the finish off of your uh, cabinets or tables. So just don't do it. And so you have to remember, these things are pretty uh, sturdy. They're old, yes, but generally they're sturdy. Especially these plastic ones, they don't have any problems. So you should feel free to be a little bit aggressive when it comes to getting substances off of them because you're not gonna hurt it. Now we're gonna just continue on. in this little interlude is that these ridges inside of the Polaroid uh, lenses, all of them have them in some capacity, they hold a crap ton of dirt. Even though, so this one you can see like there's some chunks and there's some dirt, but even when they don't look like there's anything there, I'm telling you, you can clean it for 20 minutes and you're still gonna be getting gunk out of it. It is absolutely disgusting but true. So that is a focus area if you are restoring a camera or cleaning a camera, that is one area that holds a crap ton of dirt. Now knowing what kinds of materials are on your camera is really important. So with rubbing alcohol, you definitely do not want to get it on leather, for example. Um, with things like this that are made of plastic, Rubbing alcohol is probably your best option. Now I will say that sometimes it will streak, so you need to make sure you do your strokes in the same direction on like black surfaces, at least in the beginning, because sometimes it'll start to look a little messy, but generally it's fine. Um, the other thing is you don't really want to use rubbing alcohol on these lenses because sometimes it'll leave streaks and that's just not really that fun to deal with, but it's kind of fine. It doesn't really matter. I'll generally do like a circle around the edge of it because that tends to hold a lot of nastiness. This was a clean q-tip and now it's been entirely used on this section. And it might look very clean when you first go at it on your first go around, but then it dries and you can see once again where all the dirt is. So just remember that fun fact. Anything that's a knob. For example, you can see here, it's got a lot of dirt around it. So just make sure that you turn and make sure you look for anywhere that has really deep ridges because generally it's gonna get a lot of dirt in it and you're just gonna have to try really hard to get it out. So that is the front pretty much clear. So it's not a huge step. It's definitely still got some busted spots you can see, like around this edge, which is a paint thing, not a cleaning thing. So I don't try and restore paint. I just, I just let it be. Something that is not really gross at all. So I'm just gonna use a bit of a cotton ball, not a lot of it because you don't really need a lot of cotton ball to do it. It's just easier than a little Q-tip. I haven't tried reusable cotton balls. If anybody watching this has ever tried like reasonable, blah, 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 reusable cotton swabs, let me know. And um, maybe I'll switch over if they're as effective. But anyways, so with this, I just like to go in long, strokes all in the same direction generally because 
they tend to get a little streaky as you can see um there's this little bump here so i'm just gonna make sure i make an effort to get around that here and this part is a more uh, textured plastic which means it's gonna hold more dirt and also these little grooves this edge you're gonna need to clean more I tend to try and get up under things too because even though it is up and you would think like oh dirt falls downwards um, it can still get gross sometimes so we're just gonna clean all the way around this eyepiece I like to be very particular about getting a good amount of alcohol in the eyepieces because um, that's like where people put their eyeballs and 70 year old eyeball juice from strangers sounds like an infection waiting to happen in my opinion, so. Now, these fabric straps, I do not clean because I don't really have a good method of it to be quite honest with you um i need to do more research into that but generally the straps i don't seem to have a problem with for some reason like i've gotten very lucky um but generally i would just say like you don't want to soak those with alcohol probably because it's really not going to do much for you or your camera now this part is absolutely grungy as crap so let's do a little zoom in here on this it's a little bit blurry because we're so zoomed but this is where we can read the amount of shots we have left and as you can see it is just all sorts of mess messy in there I can't really tell what's going on so we're just gonna use a q-tip here and I like to use circular motions to stick it in and just twist it at least to start with because that will get a decent amount out and that is absolutely disgusting make sure you clean out the top area too because that tends to hold the dirt as well and that is much much better so this is very uh scuffed and rubbing alcohol does not get rid of scuffs but it does it does help to disguise a little bit of your flaws i suppose you can really start to see your camera's issues sometimes though once you start cleaning it but that's okay it just goes to show you that it is nice and loved so and now, last but not least, and maybe the most important, if you want to log in camera, is I missed a spot. Anyways, um, I like to open up the film hole like so, and just do a little bit of cleaning here. With rust, I have not experimented yet on using like a rust remover on cameras. I do have one that has rust. I've got a couple that have rust on them. However, I have not tried yet. It may work in certain situations, but I'm a little bit nervous, so I haven't tried it yet. So basically, I'm just gonna take the scrubbing alcohol. Once again, I'm going to clean up whatever mess is on these rollers. Ooh, don't close on me, buddy. Ooh. So we're just going to give the rollers a little clean. I'm going to clean this top area up a little bit if I can. This is a sticker. Where is it? This is a sticker. So I don't really trust myself. Well, I do, but I just don't really feel the need to do much cleaning on it because it's pretty fine and I tend to not try and mess with the internals too much because I'm not a restorationalist as I've claimed in the beginning of this video that I'm not but I can go in and just do some really quick stuff 
and then let it air out. So let that dry. You don't want the rubbing alcohol to um, cause it to rust. The higher your alcohol content, the better because it's not going to stay in rust, but that's my recommendation. Now to make sure that you can maintain your camera's condition, make sure you dust it regularly. You clean it as needed if you're displaying it. Make sure you clean your rollers and make sure you use the correct type of film. The sticker right here tells you what kind of camera film to use. So this is just SX70 film. However, others like the Impulse use a film such as uh, 600. You can get black and white or color. This is the modern selling of it. Um, but anyways, let's go to the outro. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed that little footage of me cleaning my newest camera. Um, if you would like more camera content in the future, I have ideas. So let me know if you want to see that and I will give it to you. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for any of you who are also camera enthusiasts who want to just clean up your collection a little bit. I've had this method work on cameras from the 30s all the way to the early 2000s. So it works. You just need to know what materials are on your camera and you need to be gentle unless you know it's not going to hurt it. So just, you know, be smart about it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, found it interesting. Leave a like if you liked it comment, share it with your friends, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!